Ikea? It's Ikea. It's Ikea. Ikea store. I love Ikea. I've been shopping online this morning. I buy a lot of things from Ikea. Welcome to the customer journey module for the Hero's Journey Mastermind. I am extremely excited about this uh, module specifically, even though this module is not going to be long, it's not going to have that many videos. The content of these two videos that you're going to be having on this module are absolutely critical. First of all, the uh, Hero's Journey Mastermind once again includes the word journey. And uh, this means that you're going to be traveling. There's a, there's a beginning and there's an end and there's a destination. And uh, there's also some navigation that needs to be done. Yeah. And that's why it's so important that you understand what it is. You need to understand from our side, what is the journey that you're going to be taking in the Hero's Journey Mastermind. But also what you need to understand is that you also need to prepare a journey, a customer journey a customer experience journey on what people are going to experience every single time that uh, they do business with you. So when we started putting this lesson together and planning on the lesson, I mentioned to Frank that uh, for me, the two best customer journeys and experiences that I've ever had, one of them is IKEA and the other one is uh, either Disneyland or possibly Walt Disney World. And uh, obviously, I mean, we are in Texas and there's no uh, Walt Disney World or, or uh, Walt Disney in, uh, in Houston. So we decided to go to Ikea. Right, Frank? Yeah, we did. And uh, Ernesto, you, you, you told me we were going to go to observe the Ikea journey. And actually, uh, if you remember, the journey started before we even got off the freeway because it was not only backed up through the entire parking lot, but the, the on-ramp was backed up on the freeway. And it brought me back to uh, our lesson plan we do on oversubscribe. Um, we couldn't get in. And yeah. so uh, it was quite a quite a journey uh, that we're going to explain to you guys. Uh, but it started in the uh, parking lot. Yeah, but you know, the weird thing is that it doesn't matter in which day of the week you go to IKEA. I mean, IKEA, compared to any Walmart superstore, IKEA is a lot bigger. And every single day, at any other, at any time that you will go, it's completely full. How do they accomplish that? I think that's just the most important thing that we need to to understand. So, uh, right now on screen, you are seeing we, Frank and myself, we're getting into the shop, and uh, we are just basically starting the journey there. What is the first thing, Frank, that we see the moment that we enter the, the journey? So, first of all, we see a welcome in Swedish. Because first of all, and I, I, this is just uh, something that goes besides um, the, uh, the lesson, IKEA, that's not how it is pronounced. It's IKEA because it is the, 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 the Swedish pronunciation. But here in the States, everybody calls it IKEA. There's a welcome sign. And immediately after the welcome sign, there's something really interesting. Frank, possibly you can tell them about it. Well, as soon as you go in there, they provide you with a little station that has uh, a pad and a little pencil so that you can start to write down the items that you have an interest in. Uh, and then immediately after that, it's followed up with arrows, Ernesto, pointing every direction for you to go on the journey. And they also include navigation maps uh, to show you where you are in that process. So, uh, and you're able to write down all the items on the notepad. So how can we actually compare that to the journey that you're going to be going right now on the mastermind? I mean, right now you have a ton of different modules. You have a ton of different lessons, mini lessons. Uh, you have uh, uh, several topics that you possibly are interested in. The most important thing is that you take notes. And, and then it took to the next stage that was kind of fascinating and that was uh, they had this little food court area. And the food court area, so you could review your notes that you had written down and decide, did I want this item or did I want that item? And I equated it, you may re recall, I said to you, I said, well, Anessa, this is like our, uh, our collaboration calls, our implementation calls, that they get the idea, they wrote it down, they took their notes, but now they need to decide 
do I go this direction or do I go over here first and how do I refine it? So uh, it was incredible because the journey, we were pretty much following it anyways because it applies to every business every time. Yeah. So what happens is that the moment that you actually go up before you get into the uh, into the lunch or a restaurant place, which, by the way, has another very interesting thing that we didn't mention. And that is that the price of the food is actually very inexpensive. So you can actually have salmon, salmon. I mean, not really a hamburger and a hot dog. You can have actually a salmon or you can have a nice steak or you can have some pretty good food for four or five dollars. So just think about it. Basically, what you do is you go there, they give you a, a low commitment uh, item for you to actually start spending money. So you st you spend very little money on a steak. Possibly they're not making any money on that dish that they're serving for you or that, or that salmon that you're, they're making for you. But you already made a small little commitment. That's the micro commitment. And then you start getting a little bit further in a journey into the different ways uh, maze, if you want to, if you want to call it, and you're going to see the showroom, which is of course super interesting because in the showroom, you're going to have every single item displayed that you can get. So obviously, as you possibly have uh, experience in IKEA, when you go to IKEA, you don't buy the piece of furniture assembled. You actually have to assemble it yourself. But they have a display, a display room, which is huge, where you can see every single thing already assembled. Why? Because at that moment, you're already thinking, oh, that's exactly how my house is going to be looking. Because, of course, if you see it inside a box, it will be very difficult for you to figure out that that's how you, your things are going to be looking at at home. So how can this compare to what uh, we are doing here on this uh, Hero's Journey Mastermind? Well, you have all the courses. We're telling you what it is about. And we're, give, we're telling you what's going to be the end result. So every time that you are going through the maze on this uh, Hero's Journey Mastermind, you can see what would be the end result. We are showing you, for example, the videos that Frank and I are making or the website that we are creating or the results that you're getting if you actually do your LinkedIn profile, etc. And uh, that is exactly the same thing as we uh, as if we will be in IKEA. And I may be off a, a couple dollars, Ernesto, but I think that the average customer spends somewhere in the vicinity of $356. IKEA's combined global and online presence is massive. It brought in $45 billion in retail sales, had 1 billion store visits, and 2.8 billion online visits in 2019. Its closest competitor in the home furnishing space, Bed Bath & Beyond, brought in $12 billion in 2018 in in-store sales. Now that we know that uh, all the items are there, are there in the sh in the showroom. We will go down, and then, as soon as we get down there, every single accessory is going to be available. So there's another floor. There's two floors, unlike in uh, Walmart. In Walmart, you have one floor, and it's wholly dis uh, completely distributed. In IKEA, there's two floors. On the floor at the top, you have the display room. Then you go down. And the moment that you go down, the first thing that you're going to see are all the accessories so that actually you can start getting all those different accessories. Then you will get into the warehouse. We are right now in the warehouse where you're going to find every item that you saw up there on the uh, showroom. And now you have to assemble it. And you put on your card. Now it tells you the bin and the aisle to pick it up. And you're going to see the greatest part for the merchant is the customers are not only loading shopping carts, but they're push pallets as well. And if you start adding up all the stuff that you add, that you actually put into your shopping cart, as Frank was saying, the average transaction is going to be about $356. Now, look at the power of this. This is, this is a well-oiled machine. The, the shop is full every single minute there's 10 15 uh, cashiers which are just uh, processing an average of 356 dollars okay so, looks so here we are we're at the end of the customer journey which is the actual checkout and you'll see that if you look at these aisles from all the way over there all the way over here every single one of them is actually a 361 dollar minimum purchase but here's what we want you to take away with ernesto and i want you to experience that you can pivot and you can grow your current business so you're no longer just local you can go statewide national 
you could go international, but the exciting part is if you pay attention to all the modules and start putting them in with the implementation, you can actually automate your business. You can have it running 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Imagine people going to your checkout counter and they're getting the products that you're now gonna be able to deliver. So buckle up, make sure you go through all the resource library and get on the implementation call, ask Ernesto, ask myself, and let's go through this customer journey of expanding your business together. The moment that you cross the cashiers, there's going to be more opportunities for you to shop. And just to finish this video, I have to show you this because this is pure genius. You come over here, you get amazing cinnamon buns and you get all sorts of Swedish products. And uh, if we just come over here, we can see that they have an entire supermarket with stuff from uh, Norway and Sweden. And uh, what is great is that is the trade brand from IKEA. How are you going to make people remember you after they leave your business? They are leaving a little mark and that's exactly what we want to leave with you. So make sure that every time that you're actually putting together a business, you can think of the entire journey that your customer is going to take because that's going to make a big difference on your business. So what's, what's the reason why we want to show you all this uh, information? Not because we want to advertise IKEA, but what I think it's very interesting is that you see that this is on purpose. This is done uh, with a specific purpose in mind so that they can take everybody. I mean, they have the automation. Every single thing is set as a system. Same as you have a system here on the uh, app of the uh, Hero's Journey Mastermind. And uh, you also need to think about in, what, in whatever business you're in, you need to make sure that you know what's going to be the journey that you're going to take your customers because that's exactly where the money is. It's not only about customer acquisition. What do you do after the customer gets inside of your universe? How can you get them to spend more money? How can you get them to really become your raving fans? How can you get them to promote your stuff? How can you make them be and trust you as much as you possibly can? And that's why you need to learn about how to craft your customer journey. So on the next video, I'm going to give you two perfect examples on how uh, a customer journey is built. And the next thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that you start also crafting what's going to be the customer journey for your clients and customers. So my name is Richard Lachraun. I'm the creative director for IKEA here in the US. Which is an important job. He's in charge of how the products are presented in the store. That includes layout. Retailers pay close attention to how their floor plan can change in-store behavior. Grid layouts emphasize speed and convenience. Or freeform layouts allow exploration, which can make customers visit more parts of the shop. And racetrack designs create a loop that exposes customers to a certain path of product. IKEA uses a fixed path through a maze of product displays, and that can extend the distance traveled in store. So the more you travel, the more items by definition as a shopper you are going to be exposed to. They have everything, everything that they need to complete the entire home. First home, rental home, vacation home, small business, work from home. Expand your market, expand your items. Use all the resources in the resource library and join the monthly implementation calls so we can guide you on best maximums. Researchers estimate that half of consumer spending is unplanned. Sometimes it's stuff you just forgot to put on your list, but there's another kind of purchase that consumer psychologists measure. That would be more of your impulse purchase where you see something, you think, hey, that's kind of a cool item. I think I'll you know, buy that. The architecture of a store can impact consumer satisfaction, which in turn might spur impulse buys. In the 20th century, the architect Victor Gruen used light and space to dramatically stage goods in storefront windows. 
His designs tried to capture the attention of passers-by and convert them into customers. Today, people refer to this as the Gruen Effect. It happens when a store takes you from shopping for a specific item to shopping for shopping's sake.